Right here. Yeah. Yesterday we ended off um, having a look at a working DC motor and really focusing in on this very special. Um, I'll just give the annotations on this here. This very special device. Oh, very special device there called the commutator. We will eventually um, meet two different types of commutators in the course. This one here is called the split ring commutator. And remember the word commutator, um, if you actually type it into your um, search engine, it will always come up as a badly stop word uh, in Word. It is actually meaning to communicate with the outside world. To, um, to actually some way for communicating between the coil and the power source. And it's a split ring is the design of this shape. So what is the function? And we said that has two functions, but I only decided to tell you the first function yesterday. It's the main function that it poses is that it is a way of having the current come into the a coil in such a way that it's not connected directly to the outside power source. In that case, the wires would not um, tangle up as it turns. But it has a second very important function. If the current stays in the same direction, then the torque will go only in one direction. So the commutator's function is to reverse the direction of current in the coil where it reaches the upright position in such a way that the torque reverses. So we'll actually have a look at this, but I'll just describe it firstly, um, word it. The commutator changes the direction of current when the coil reaches the upright position. That's its second function. Because it changes the direction of current, it changes the direction of the force on the coil. So where the coil was being pulled up on one edge and being pushed down on the other edge, when it reaches the upright, the force reverses and that edge now gets pulled down and the other one gets pulled up so that we get a continuous turn. Okay. So just to recap very quick. Um, then before we actually look at this in operation. If the coil, the current in the coil stays the same, what will happen is the coil will go from the horizontal to the vertical and just stay there. Okay. So once the coil re that reaches the upright position, it would not turn any further. So what we need to do is we need to have the torque from being pulling outward to being our push inward. We need to change the direction of the force. To do this, the only way that it's quick and reliable to change the direction of the force is to change the direction of the current. So it's the current we're going to change. Now, apart from having magic um, current ferries on the outside switching the current on, um, backwards and forwards, we need to have a design for this to work. Are we okay with what the second function of the commutator is? Recap, the first function is it provides a way for the current to get into the coil. And second, its design in the split ring formation is so that when the coil reaches the upright position, either for every half turn, it will reverse the current in the coil. When the coil's current reverses, the force direction will also reverse. Right, so let's have a look at this in greater detail. Here are two diagrams of the split ring commutator. Um, the one that we have at the back of the room that we looked at yesterday has the um, split ring in two um, solid halves separated by a piece of black plastic down the centre which is um, non-conductive. But here is a much lighter version. So here in those annotations, we get that the commutator is made up of two parts. The first part is the split ring itself. Split ring. 
and the brush. There are two brushes. One of the brushes goes to one end of the coil and the other is attached to the other end of the coil. So the brushes themselves aren't actually connected to the split ring, they just make contact? They just make contact, they slide over top. That's the reason why you get this friction and gr grinding and sparking. Okay? Every time this brush makes this gap, it will spark. And that means that over a period of time, the brush and the commutator start to wear down and it's one of the reasons why the, the motor will start to fail. Because okay? friction always causes this, but sparking adds to the friction. And it adds to the um, destruction of the brush. The brush itself starts to wear down, and so does the surface of our commutator. Right, now, how does the commutator work? And don't worry about copying this part down. This is my diagrams here. Um, <laughs> I tried my best, so just... Um, so here's our split ring over here. So this is one side of the commutator there, and this is the other side of the commutator here. Okay, and here's our two brushes. And these two wires, on our one, we had one was red and one was black, and that's a very good way of using it, um, of describing it, because we use red and black to indicate positive and negative um, terminals. It's just a way of okay current in and current out. Okay, so that's the in the horizontal position. Now what will happen is, there's the same thing again, sorry, we're going to say that this side over here, B is connected to B at an end, and this side over here, the A is connected to the A end. And let's see what happens as we turn the coil. As we turn the coil, sorry, see my diagrams, okay, um, Remember, A is connected to the A end up here and B is connected to the B end. We're just getting to, we're starting to turn and the brush is just about to leave one edge and hit the other edge. Okay. So this brush here is still in contact with A. Okay. And this brush over here is still in contact with B. So it's the, looking at the brush and what, what end it's of the, co cord, um, of the coil it is contacted with. Right, now we turn it all the way around and we're still turning the commutator. We've now passed the, um, the little piece of plastic and we're now starting to contact um, another part of the coil. So let's have a look at this. This brush over here is now in contact with B. And this brush is now in contact with A. So look at what, going back, this brush on this side was in contact with A. The same brush now is in contact with B. So the brush is, that, remember the brush is what uh, the electricity goes in through the brush and then into the coil. So that means that current flows in now, let's go back. Current flows in direction A through to B. This current comes in through A, through the coil and out through this brush. So it's in in this brush and out through this brush. So the current direction in this orientation is A to B. Now, remember, it always flows in through this one. It's coming in through B. So current comes in the coil through B and goes out through A. So current direction now is B through A. So the coil's current used to be A to B, it is now B to A. Just because we've twisted the commutator, we've turned the commutator around. So as it keeps on going around further and further, the current will flow in one way and then half of turn later it will flow the other way. Okay. So let's have a look at what happens here in this position here. Which direction will this motor be made to turn? Um, okay. If current is flowing in this side here okay, and 
B is going this direction. So B is that way. So let's put side on. We know that looking at this is really, really hard. So there's south and there is north. Okay, going that direction. Current is flowing into the board. Which way is this um, being, this, this coil turning? Just on this one here. Right, so you go that way, in, up. This is forced upward. So this is going up. Okay. Now imagine there is no commutator. Okay. What will happen is this end, this for the coil, there's a coil and there's the two ends coming in. We are told that this side here is pushed up. Obviously this side must be pushed down. So that's what's going on in this coil now. It tilts to that way there. What is this end pushed? Up. And this is pushed down. When it gets to the vertical, what's going to happen? If this, this one gets pushed up and this is pulled down. So what's going to happen is it will get to the vertical and stop. Okay? It's like we take a piece of paper and this side is always pushed up and this is pushed down. But when we get to here, all we do is just pull against each other. Okay? This is like the most useless um, motion because we'll just take the quarter turn up and that will be back. So what we need to do is when it gets to this point here, we need to change the direction of this, this force from being pointing up to pushing down. All we need to do is allow momentum to take, turn the coil a little bit over and then once it turns itself just over a bit, it will then push itself down. So we go pull, uh, push up, 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 push down, 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 up, 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 and down. So we keep the tumbling going over and over. Is that making sense how this works? Okay, so here it is again. On the one turn, the first quarter turn, the forces are pointing up. Okay. As we turn over, the vertical. Now, if you start to spin anything, it's going to not just go straight to the vertical and stop, is it? It's going to just overshoot. And then if we turn at this moment, we make it push down, we'll get it tumble the other direction. And when it comes to the other end, we make it push up again and we just keep the turn over and over. Are we okay with how this is working? So we go down here and then we push up there. Okay? So the reversal of the current takes place every half turn. When it's in the upright position, that's when the, um, the coil's current changes. Okay. So it changes direction when the coil is in the vertical position. So we start from the, the horizontal, which is the normal way. A quarter turn later, it will start to change direction. Then a half turn after that, half turn, half turn, half turn. Right, yeah. Um, just, uh, I was going to um, do something with this one, but I'm not worrying about it. Just, it's to do with torque on the coil, and you already know all about the torque anyway. Okay, so, um, I think it still works. Let's see if I can make this work. Yes. Keep your fingers in. And I've got to, oh, run this time. This um, applet here, I'll send you the link to it. It's also on the Moodle, but unfortunately you might not be able to get there at the moment. Um, goes through and explains how the force changes. Now you can turn off each of these three things there. We can just see the, the loop turning around. Okay. And let's put it in the current direction each time. So at the moment it's going into the board and now it turns and it goes out of the board. So every half turn. Now normally our motors are in the horizontal position. This is a vertical motor, isn't it? Okay, so the upright position would be in the horizontal. 
because normally we have the magnets on the side. Here we've got the magnets on the vertical. So we've just got to put everything by a quarter turn. I don't know why it's done that. So this is the upright. When the commutator goes grey, that's when the brushes no longer are in contact with anything. And that's just the momentum of the coil completing the turn. Okay, do you understand what I mean by the momentum of the coil? It's like a ballet dancer doing a spin. They don't immediately stop once they um, stop pushing. They keep on turning. And as each side of the coil gets in contact with the different side of the commutator, the current reverses. The one thing that doesn't change in all cases is the direction of the magnetic field. The north pole is on the top and the um, south pole is on the bottom, so the magnetic field stays the same. The force, in this case this is called the Lorentz force, the Lorentz force is just the, um, the name of the magnetic force here, the, the, the motor effect force. You can see that it's pulling it out, now it will push it in, the direction of the forces change each time on the side of those coils, keeping the um, thing constantly changing over. Okay, are we making sense of that? If I increase the current going in, I'll increase the rate of turn. If I decrease the current going out uh, into the thing, I will also slow the current. Okay? So now this would be the upright position. And now the Lorentz force or the magnetic, the magnetic force is pushing it on the other direction. Are we okay with the what we need to do? Okay. Right. So you're going to take a few moments now to...